Hello, everyone. My name is Qian Feng from Baidu Security. Today, I will be talking about AI model mutator finding vulnerabilities in TensorFlow. This is a joint work with my colleagues. Thanks for their contribution, especially thanks Zhao Fengchen, Ya Kun Zhang, Ying Wang, and Kang Li. In this talk, I will first introduce two business models in AI system and then discuss why and how we conduct AI model mutation in TensorFlow. Finally, I will discuss some experience and the takeaways from AI model mutation and hope those experiences can benefit the community to find bugs in other AI systems. Okay, let's begin. There are two business models in AI system. For end users, AI is a service. All the users can access service through API calls. For AI developers, AI models are products. More and more developers would like to purchase or download the models from third-party stores we call model stores, such as Model Zoom, GitHub, TensorFlow Hub, or Pido Hub. Those developers will download this model, reuse them, or build their own model based on those third-party models. However, how can we guarantee those models are being done? If not, those models could exploit the vulnerability inside the AI framework to launch the attack. This will put all upstream service in danger. This means any tiny bugs inside the AI framework are dangerous. So, finding AI framework become very important. Since all the trouble start from same the model, we can we would like to conduct fuzzing directly on the same model. Random mutation is not a good choice because it doesn't work. It's hard to generate a valid model by manipulating the bytes in the saved model files because the model files are serialized data. Any tiny modification on those data could damage the file format and get stuck at the format checking stage. Our solution is structure-aware model mutation. Our structure-aware model mutator will load the model from the saved model files and construct the model graph and conduct mutation on this graph. For example, the left side is serialized the data, a saved model, and after conversion, it becomes a model graph. We can directly manipulate this graph to generate different model. Our current stage is to only mutate the cars model in TensorFlow. Let's use cars model to demonstrate our idea. Here is one example. On the left side, written in Python, is to conduct item operator on two input tensors. On the right side, it's the model graph. Since the original model graph is a little bit big, so we use actual one to demonstrate. On this graph, there are node and edge. The node is operator and the edge is a tensor. In this case, the add operator will take two tensors from placeholder and the placeholder will accept the input tensor to for the add operation. So mutating model graph is to mutate the operator and the tensor. So let's discuss in tensor mutation first. Before discussing tensor mutation, what's a tensor? Tensor is a high dimensional matrix with the three properties, shape, data type, and the value. Value is a constant or a list of values, such as a three, one, and a two. Data type is an object to describe the data type of the value. Shape is a 2D array. It has two properties, dimension and rank. Dimension is the element in the shape array, and the rank is the length of the array. Mutating tensor is to mutate those value in the tensor. Input tensor mutation is to use TensorFlow APIs to generate those tensors. There are a lot of TensorFlow API to generate tensor, for example, constant, zero, or other things. In this, in 
this example showed in the slide, is a we want to construct a tungsten tensor using arg argument, the value argument, data type arg argument, or shape. But random mutation is not is not going to work because the value should be compatible with the shape and the data type. If we random mutate those argument, well, it will always get errors. Let's talk about uh, the constraint on each of those APIs. The constant, let's, like we discussed before, the shape can, could be optional. If zero exists in the shape, the value should be arbitrary. There is no zero in the shape, the value should be compatible with the shape. For example, if the value is a list, the length or list should be smaller than number elements in the shape, the variable operation. It has initial value argument, shape, and data argument. Initial value is required. If the shape is unknown, the value can be arbitrary. But if not, the shape should be compatible with those values. Ones and zeros try, it try, are trying to generate tensor with all the same number, such as one or zero. Its argument, it has a shape argument, but the shape argument should be rank two, otherwise it failed. The data type cannot be string where a resource, otherwise it also will get up. We can see there are so many constraints on those is TensorFlow generation APIs. So it's not a trivial way to generate a tensor by manipulating the argument also on those is operations. And it requires a lot of works. So we would like to, we would like to pursue another easier way. Here is our solution. We would like to generate random tensor by NumPy because NumPy provides a lot of manipulation APIs on metrics. We can easily generate metrics with the lower and upper bound use random int. We can, uh, as long as we can provide the lower and upper bound and the size that is which is sheep. We also can generate a random matrix in descending or in increasing order by using NumPy sort API. In this case, in such to the, in this way, we can generate random ten tensor as many as we want without caring about the value shape data type compatibility. However, what if we do not want to generate tensor so randomly? What if we want to generate tensor with some prefixed properties? We can utilize some kind of uh, features defined in TensorFlow. For example, we, if we want to generate tensor with specific value or arbitrary shape, we can use variable operation and set its shape to be none. If we want to generate empty tensor for arbitrary rank value or ten dimension value for rank and dimension fading, we can use the constant operation by set its dimension to be zero. In this case, we can generate as many tensors as we want. But it's hard to schedule. We need some preference. Otherwise, it will filter and then work. For example, it will get started at some point without any coverage improvement. So we can schedule input by their tensor value. But the random selection on those tensor value is not a good choice because the tensor value is integer or some string, uh, they have a large search space. Here is, we need some preference. Here is a hint. Empty tensor could be a good choice. It always causes issues. We find a lot of bug found in TensorFlow are caused by empty tensor. Here is one example. This is empty tensor. It's constant tensor with the, the empty value inside. It looks fun, but it's not if we use them as input tensor for the quantization range this operation, because the kernel instead of the, this operation does not consider the empty tensor. In this case, it still accepts the first element of the input tensor, empty tensor, which will cause out of boundary rate issue. We also can schedule input tensor by their tensor dimension. Still, the random selection is not a good choice 
because Tinder dimension 18 integer, it still have a big search space. We need some preference. Here is zero. Here is a hint. Z zero could be a good candidate. We also find a lot of bug found in TensorFlow caused by this issue. For example, this bug. The input tensor is a, is a tensor with a zero dimension inside of his ship. If we use them as an input for a reverse operator, it will cause issues because the internal design does not consider zero this case. It still uses it as a divisor, so which will cause divided by zero issues. We also can schedule input by tensor rank. Still, the random selection is not good choice. There are so many checks on the operators, and the most operators has the ship inference check at the graph generation stage. So if we random generate the tensor with different the random ranks, it will get filled all the time. For example, here is a metric del v2 operator. This operator will check each of its argument with a specific rank value. For example, it check the last two, uh, two arguments, whether they are rank zero. If not, it failed. So if we fit this operation with tensor or with other rank values, it will get error. We talk so many things about how to schedule a single tensor. But instead of the model for each operator, it at least have more than one tensor. So that means that we need to schedule multiple tensor at the same time. But we cannot randomly select each of tensor separately. We need to consider their correlation sometimes, especially, for example, for compound tensor. Sparse tensor is a compound tensor. If we want to construct a sparse tensor, we need to con consider their argument, index, value, and the dense shape. They have some quick constraints on those component tensors. For example, the index should be two-dimensional array, the value should be one-dimensional array, and the dense shape should be one-dimensional array. So if we generate a tensor which are not meet those standards, it will cause error. So we can prioritize those tensors which meet standards first. On the other hand, we still need to consider some exceptions because no internal design of the tensor flow will meet those standards. If we always generate the qualified tensor, we will miss some kind of bugs. For example, this vulnerability, which found in TensorFlow, it assumes it assume that the index should be compatible with the shape, but in fact, it's not, so it causes error. Another example is that those multiple tensors could be constrained by their operation. To, for example, the square grid, this operation, it assumes two input tensors share the same dimension. But their internal design does not consider the exception. So if we provide this operation with empty value, it will get the exception. Another case is that in Unicode encode this operation. It always assumes the value in the input split must be smaller than or equal to the input tensor lines. But if we provide the tensor with which does not meet the this standard, it will cause this bug. We talk so many things about the input tensor mutation preference. So we list all those preference and in these two tables, we can prioritize the tensors during the scheduling scheduling process. For example. We can prioritize the tensor, single tensor, if their dimension has zero. Or we can prioritize single tensor if their value has negative ones. 
for the multiple tensor correlation. We can schedule or prioritize those tensors with the same dimension, or we can schedule those tensors with different dimension. Or we can schedule those prioritize those tensors, empty tensors at first. We talk so many things about input tensor mutation. Let's talk about input placeholder mutation. The placeholder does not have value. It only has the data type and the shape. On the left side, it's the, on the right side, it's the structure of the placeholder stored in graph model graph. So it has two sections, the data type and the shape. If we want to mutate the placeholder, we will mutate the data type section and the shape section, respectively. However, we cannot conduct a random mutation on those fields because the input tensor should be compatible with the input placeholder. Otherwise, it will have some error. Here is one example. There, here is a cars model we would like to construct. There are how to input the tensor and to placeholder. But we can see they have a different shape. So if we want to generate the model, it will cause error. This means we need to modify the placeholder for every tensor with different shape or ranks values. It's not a trivial way to do that. So we would like to generate a more generic placeholder. This placeholder can accept as many as possible tensors with man minimal modification. Here is our generic model template. We put the noun for each column in the shape for the placeholder. In this way, placeholder can take any tensors as long as they share the same rank. So we can directly mutating the rank of the placeholder instead of mutating the rank and the ten dimension at the same time. It saves a lot of effort. Now let's talk about the operator mutation. Operator represents the execution logic in the model graph. It has the op name, argument, and the output. In this talk, we only focus the two part, first part, the op name and the argument. Here is one example of the op node, which is stored in saved model. The op operator mutation is to mutate the op name argument. The op name is easy to mutate since all the operators are registered with the specification instead of a TensorFlow framework. So we can conduct the code analysis in the TensorFlow framework to retrieve those node names and then conduct random selection on those nodes for mutation. For the argument tensor mutation, in this case, in our this talk, we only consider argument tensor, which are from directly from the input tensor. So we use input tensor mutation instead. Notice that the data type is constrained by operation spec. This means if the data type is, by, is specified by the operator, we cannot change it. Otherwise, it will fail. So we can only mutate the shape and the value. At this time, the constant argument, which I'm not, the constant argument, it cannot be passed through the input tensor. So instead, they are stored in the attributes of the op node. So we conduct random mutation on those op node for our purpose. We talk so many things about AI model mutator. How we conduct AI model mutator? Here is our overall architecture. It includes M graph constructor, policy selection, and graph-based mutation. The M graph constructor is take the model, save the model from the file. 
and convert them into the model graph. And the policy selection and to select random select the policies we predefined discussed before. And the graph model mutation is to mutate those to conduct input tensor mutation or placeholder mutation or op mutation on this graph. Here is our result. We evaluated our AI model mutator in TensorFlow 2.4.3, and we can successfully generate validation models to trigger 66 CVEs found in TensorFlows. We also find six confirmed vulnerabilities in TensorFlow 2.4.3 using our model mutator, these techniques. But uh, it's hard to fix, so it hasn't uh, um, released yet. So we will release details after we get the CVE number. This is pretty much about my talks. Thanks for your attention. Any question are welcome. Thank you.